Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Monster Genius video. So in today's video, I'm back with other top team wars. You guys can also call this an elite war. Um, so it's basically Team Spirit 2015 versus Hounds of Justice. Just a quick spoiler alert, we did win, of course. Um, it was a super fun war though. Uh, you know, great job Hounds of Justice players and also great job um, to our players as well. We did amazing, um, but we did end up winning, of course. And um, I, I'm sure you guys saw the community post that I um, made on my community tab, right? When I told you guys, I asked you guys who would win, who you think would win. Uh, and lots of you guys were actually saying Hounds. Uh, I was actually surprised about that. But hey, uh, guess what? Our team won. Um, so yeah, it was a super fun war though. It was an elite war and um, I recorded all attacks, all 12 attacks, um, six on my <clears throat> main account and then six on my alt account. So there will be two parts for this team wars, okay? I will be posting the first part, which is in today's video, and then the other one very soon. So um, you guys will see both of the sides and how I basically performed um, in this team wars. So I hope you guys are excited for this, and if you are, drop a like and also subscribe to the channel notifications on. Anyways, let's go on and get started. All right, so let me go ahead and tell you guys this real quick. Um, us, when it's an elite war, like for example, how it was now, we had to reserve bases right so we had to communicate with our team leads and stuff like that it wasn't like we just go ahead and pick whoever we want although it was kind of like that you pick a base and then you tell them you communicate um and let them know how the battle is going to go and uh, what your plan is and then once they let you go then you can go ahead and attack them you know what i mean it's uh it's not like every day war basically but take a look at this this was one of their players hollow one and it was running a 150 for other not all of them are 150 of course but um with triple speed there, right? With Pain Dizzler. And there's also a, um, what's called Panican, an attacker one, one strength and two speed. Uh, and then lastly, there was Soul Drag, as you guys can see. Soul Drag um, is on Mouse Run. You probably can't see that because of Sensei Panican's hand, but um, it was running triple team speeds and it was a section GS. Um, so it was actually pretty easy to crack. All I had to do was run Boronaut with two team speeds and one life mutant, right? So it gets everybody life. And I was running uh, crystal form that, uh, that's, yeah, it is skill, uh, crystal form that I was running on um, my tank. And then on my attacker, I was running one strength, one life and one speed. The reason for that is because uh, of the soul drag. So I can basically counter that soul drag, you know, with having a lot of life. Uh, so I was running that. And then lastly, one team life and two speed on one of the most underrated cosmic monsters. It's actually one of my favorites, honestly. He's just super underrated. He basically brings positive status effect. He has uh, cool require or restore cooldown skills and also gives stamina and stuff. It's just so good. I love using him. But um, I was running unrolling assault with wingsuit sword, not laser beam sword, but wingsuit sword on my um, attacker there, as you guys can see. But here is how the battle went. So once again, I had so much life, 900k life on my attacker, by the way, just to, you know, counter the soul drag, although 900k was way more than enough, but hey, why not, you know, but take a look at this, Alien Plague, it's not going to land, you want to know why, because I have a dodge area monster, I have an artifact monster, can't take anything but damage, and then lastly, my taunt, which it's supposed to receive all that, right, and uh, guess what, Crystal Form kicked in and gave me Skill Mirror, now when he did it to me, I did it back to him, to his tank basically, and here, I wanted to remove Hazard Status Effect and also the Shield from Maelstrom. As you guys can see, Static Shock from Panikin just kicked in and, you know, it hit uh, my Roost Wayne. But even if it didn't, okay, and let's say next turn, it hit my attacker after I attacked it. By the way, take a look at this here. That is, I, I don't think that was below 75%, so I was debating whether or not it is below 75% or not on Maelstrom. Because remember, on Rotting Assault, 1k can if it's not below 75%, like the life, right? So... What I did, instead of using Girl Fugitive, I went ahead and swapped to Blinding Grenade. And um, take a look at this. Static Shock kicked in, dealt damage, but it didn't work because of um, my life. Uh, or not life, sorry. <laughs> Artifact trait, okay? And as you guys see, Soul Drag just kicked in. And uh, it dealt the damage, but I still have 300k. So here, I just wanted to use my AoE skill if I'm not... Yeah, I used my AoE skill. Got rid of both of them. And then take a look at the turn orders here. Um, by the way, Tanya's Amulet also helped out, so that's why I used uh, the Artifact Monster, not just because of that, but because of um, the Relic Slot 
that it, it could hold a Tannis Amulet. So Tannis Amulet basically regenerates my stamina whenever I need it because there were tons of traps there, like wormhole traps and stuff like that. So it would basically help me regenerate my stamina. And um, I won with three coins. So this next attack, it was actually pretty simple um, because I, I really didn't have to do much, but at the same time, I also had to be careful. So here's what I did. Um, by the way, the Stock Killer was running triple strength. Okay, so triple strength on Stock Killer. And then there was also um, Soul Drag on the other attacker. So it was basically two attackers with one Mega Taunt. Um, the other attacker, on the other hand, was running a Soul Drag. And it was super, super easy to counter that because um, all I had to do was just, you know, give him more life. So that's what I did. The Dew had a Team Life SX that um, is also giving some speed. Um, and so basically it's providing more life for everybody in the team, uh, but especially uh, my attacker because I'll be finishing it off with the attacker. Quick spoiler alert. Um, and then I'm assault on my attacker as well with a laser beam sword, not wingsuit sword this time, laser beam sword. Two speed and one strength and then triple speed on my spectra with uh, the spelling fist. Just excuse that level 148 spectra. Um, I didn't have any lotum left, okay? I didn't have enough lotum left, so I didn't feel like ranking it up to 150 uh but this right here it was all right so i was like i saw the speed here and there i calculated everything and i was like it's fine we're gonna be fine okay um by the way there's a static shock on the tank but here's what i did so take a look at this went ahead and started a fight and with my spectra i went ahead and used my aoe skill now there is status cast reminder blind but hey it still kicked in and it basically removed the status gastry and spatium from the attacker and also the mega taunt. So both of them. Now this monster is free to attack whoever he wants. I went with blinding grenade because that was getting um, the monster's life below 75%. So unrouting assault will kick in and I can continue spamming my attacks. Okay. So here I went with the single target because remember I have to um, end up eliminating the um, attacker very soon. I didn't eliminate it right away. So I went ahead and attacked uh saw killer with single target and then here uh, as you guys can see the attacker was running pain distiller which um which was a uh, not the best choice i mean i see what the player was trying to do but um it didn't work out enough for me so i went ahead and cracked it so take a look at this i went ahead and used my aoe skill right about here i was just, de just debating whether or not i should go with uh, my single target or not so as you guys can see saw killer attacked my do the do was almost dead, but here's what I did. Instead of attacking, what I did was I went with do ups, right? Take a look at this. Do ups and Spectra's taken the turn right after. So basically, that minor blind and everything is gone. And also, uh, Tannis Amulet would have helped me out there. So I went ahead and got rid of the attacker. And here I applied the Blazing Light. So take a look at this. I actually used Blazing Light. And you're like, look at the turn orders, right? I could have literally charged up with Spectra. No, no. You remember. The monster was running the obscure talent that basically removes tortures, okay, and also deals damage to the enemy. So that I had to watch out from. So I didn't let that happen. I didn't let it happen. So I went ahead and attacked it next turn with my um, Spectra and I finished it off. Because if I let that happen, right, if I let, let's say if I charged up on my Spectra next turn and it was the monster's turn and uh, if it regenerated stamina or had enough stamina basically what she was going to do was the obscure talent would have helped her and basically removed the torture and she would have um, continued attacking and uh my dude would have probably died but hey dude could have came back but um most importantly my attacker on the other hand uh which uh, had low life because remember soul drag i countered it with that right so it was not good having that there and the attacker was running triple strength so it was pretty pretty scary and i didn't feel like letting um her do that so i went ahead and attacked it and won uh three coins this next battle was also pretty easy to counter i just had to basically swap some rings here and there and also speed up my monsters because they were on cooldown but take a look at this uh here's what i did frozy knot had uh two team speeds and one strength and three team speeds on jacuna high and then triple speed on the other monster um i feel like it would have been better if the player just went with um triple speed mutated with life instead of stamina but yeah i mean it's whatever um and so take a look at the runes and relics as you guys can see uh there was uh soul drag there on the tank so the tank had soul drag but i wanted to counter it with my cruel once again it's nice giving life here and there and uh, you know helping out um your attacker when you know your attacker has enough life over 500k 
if the monster that it's facing is at rank 5, you know, when Soul Drag kicks in, it'll deal enough, but it won't kill the monster because you can counter it with uh, having more life than Soul Drag, if that makes sense. Um, but here is what I did. I went with 1 Team Strength and 2 Speed Rune on my Bruce Wayne, one of the most underrated monsters, of course, one of my favorite ones. Um, so I went with that and then also 1 Speed, 1 Life, and 1 Strength, and then 2 Team Speed and 1 Team Life mutated with uh, speed rune okay so it was giving a lot of life here and there and i was running wingsu sword this time instead of laser beam sword with unrelenting assault so the plan was to take a look at this the plan was to let the tank take in the first turn and basically do whatever he wants but normally what the ai does the ai goes ahead and applies the damage protection and the shield so i was like you know what even if that happens it's completely fine because remember ru is going to take into turn right after Take a look at this. And I use Pursuit Villains. This skill right here, it's actually one of my favorite ones. It removes positive status effects from all enemies. So I it went ahead and done that. Of course, it didn't land on Dracuna High because it is a dodge area monster. But I got rid of the evasion damage section from the other two monsters. So take a look at this. I went ahead and used Pursuit Villains right about here. Static Shock kicked in. Doesn't really matter. Um, also, I regenerated my stamina. Uh, by the way, none of the AoE skills here actually allowed me to... You know, just help basically help my UA trigger again over and over again, you know, because it wasn't getting their life under 75%, if that makes sense. So here, Soul Drag, I just ate it <laughs> with my Cruel because uh, I was running more than 500k life. And then I just went ahead and spammed Blinding Grenade and also Wingsu Sword, helping me and, you know, getting rid of Frozy Knot. So that saved me something. But even if it didn't, it's okay. Even if I had like Laser Beam Sword or something like that, I could have still gotten rid of uh, Frozy Knot right after with um, blazing light okay so here this was super super easy you know i just had to basically uh, continue attacking with the three monster versus one and it's not like it's an attacker or something like that so i didn't have to worry about worry that much about it but take a look at this right here i actually had shock not just that but also my tank right my tank had um two tortures if i'm not mistaken but i used this skill right here it was actually kind of underrated honestly this skill right here on my um Bruce Wayne. Uh, take a look at this. The one that actually um, it's called Omeg Project. It basically just applies Neovirus to the enemies, but that's not why I did it. I wanted to get rid of the tortures that were on my monsters, my two monsters. So I went ahead and applied the Mutual Torture and that got rid of the shock and also the curse that was on my tank and also from my Bruce Wayne, of course. Um, but I doubled my life there and then I basically just continued attacking. That missed. Not surprised. Um, so. Uh, the rest of this was actually pretty simple. It was very, very, very simple. So I just basically continued attacking. And I continued restoring cooldowns as well, of course, on my monsters. And uh, it ran. It was running crystal form, so I didn't have to worry that much. But um, I went ahead and got rid of it with my last attack. And that actually secured me the win, of course, just like that. So just going to hide died, and then three coins. Easy peasy. All right, so this next base, it was... Fluffy's base. Um, this was one of their players as well. Uh, so I was running a Burning Hand. It's actually pretty underrated, isn't it? The Burning Hand's um, obstacle challenge on my Frozzy. So all I needed Frozzy was just to remove positive status effects from my, the Megaton, and that was about it. But also, of course, it applied the Burning. I was like, well, what else should I go with? I mean, I needed this Pilling Fist on my um, Denier, and then my attacker was running on something Assault. So I was like, I, I might as well just go ahead and give in, you know, burning hands and just apply some burning. But basically, I went with two speed and one team speed on Frozzy. And then my attacker, uh, I think I was running, yeah, I, I was running one life, one team speed, and one strength. Um, and then also one team speed and two speed on my denier. Okay. Uh, and then take a look at that. The enemy was running two attackers and one megaton. So there was soul drag on the other attacker. And I went ahead and countered the soul drag. Yes, you guessed it. I went ahead and countered the Soul Drag with my attacker once again. Um, so there was Unrelting Assault on spec, but I didn't really have to worry about it that much. So here is what I did. All I had to do was take in the first turn with Frozzy, which I did, and I went ahead and removed Positive Status Effect here, okay? So I used the Anti- or Alien Plague, and basically I removed Positive Status Effect and also applied the Burning. And then here I just hit them with the AoE Dispilling Fist, or just the AoE skill, which apply this feeling fist got rid of the status caster animation stuff like that and then here i was like i can literally do whatever i want because i have them under control right they're stunned they're possessed and stuff like that there's also soul drag that i had to watch out from um and then 
Uh, although their stun ran out and stuff like that, right? But take a look at the turn order, so it's still fine. But it's my attacker, it has one strength rune, and my uh, Arnolting Assault is also equipped, so it's going to help me out. Um, I'm going to have to worry about the Wormhole Trap, you know, removing my stamina, because remember, I am running Tannis Amulet, and the monster can handle Tannis Amulet. They can equip that, right? They can have that. So as you guys can see, Soul Drag kicked in again, 500k life or 500k damage dealt to my uh, Cruel. And Cruel is still alive because I had more than 500k. So that's nice, you know, that's a nice thing. Having your attacker, you know, more, just have at least over 500k life, basically. So that when Soul Drag kicks in, whenever you attack it, whenever you get rid of it with your attacker, or whatever monster, it doesn't have to be normally your attacker, but whoever it is, make sure it has at least 500k life so you could counter that uh, with of course, this monster. Um, and no, and there wasn't uh, Chuckle Muckle, um, unfortunately, in this war restriction, or else I would have used that, of course, you know, with the Pyrophobic Shields. But of course, not with Cruel, because Cruel, it can't, uh, I can't apply Pyrophobic Shield to that, of course, because it's an artifact monster. Um, but overall, three coins on this one as well and um that's how it went okay i think this base right here was the easiest to crack out of every single one of them because take a look at this it didn't have any monsters that could remove all their status effect and not just that but also displaying fist you know the spilling face um ultra talent on any of them so what i thought about was use my dreamer dreamer is pretty darn fast plus it has evasion right and i was using my level four megaton and I went ahead and gave in six team speeds in total. So as you guys can see, Lindworm does have team speeds there. Um, but basically, what you need for this is the level 4 Megatont will start off with the Megatont status caster. And your Dreamer will take in the first turn. Make sure it's this, the fastest monster in the game. Or the fastest monster in the battle, the entire battle, right? So it was faster than both, all three monsters in there out of everybody. So... The plan was to take in the first turn and basically apply evasion right away so your mega taunt has evasion and they can't remove haunter status effect meaning since they can't remove haunter status effect all their skills will do zero damage because there's evasion and it has the mega taunt status caster it's not like they have pierce or anything like that so it won't go through um and then i also had my linworm but make sure if you're gonna run linworm what i recommend doing is running uh, like the curse countdown skill since none of these monsters could remove haunter status effect you can easily uh, kill at least two or if not three but this in this case i only was able to eliminate two because the other one has um what is that uh the artifact trait okay so take a look at this i was the first one to actually beat the space as well <laughs> so take a look at this <clears throat> dreamer taking the first turn you want to apply the evasion right away and as you guys can see oh also forgot to mention you need at least 100 or 180 190k Basically, uh, over 180k life on every single one of your monsters except your Mega Taunt if you're going to use a strategy. Because remember, on Alting Assault, if the enemy ends up using a Wii Skills, on Alting Assault will deal through uh, the Mega Taunt. So, take a look at this. It will actually deal damage to the other two monsters, ignoring the Mega Taunt. That's how normally it works when you use an AoE skill. So, make sure you have over that. You have to watch out for that, okay? So, keep that in mind. Here, I wanted to apply the Death Countdown as soon as possible. Because remember that monster spans shields and uh, spans a mega taunt, but doesn't have any remove positive status effect. So he just went ahead and continued attacking, you know, getting his extra turn skills and stuff like that. And then finally he died just like that. So he was dead. And then Moja, I didn't really have to worry about Moja as much. So I just applied the, the alien traveler skill. I hit him with that. Um, and then it had one more turn until it was dead. So I continued charging and removing positive, or removing the negative status effects on the room. And also, take a look at this. Did you guys catch this? So, I mean, yeah, it could have, you know, the soul drag could have kicked in and eliminated Linworm and Linworm could have came back. But also, also, what about, you know, Dreamer? What if it kicked in Dreamer? So that's why right about here, what I did before the monster was about to die, what I went ahead and did to counter the soul drag was to take a look at this. Look at the turn orders. I saw it coming, so I went ahead and used Honor Shield. This skill right here, you need it. It applies evasion to everybody. Okay, so to, uh, since Mojo Drag was going in right after, right? And it was going to die from the tortures, I went ahead and applied that. And take a look at this. Soul Drag kicked in, zero damage dealt because of the evasion. So that's how you also counter, or another way to counter basically, uh, Soul drag. Here I just wanted to remove all the negative status effects, okay? 
going to do that. The ultimate dealt zero damage, of course. Um, it's shocked, kicked in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, actually, you need more than that, honestly. You need more than 180k or 185k, how much I mentioned earlier. Because you don't just have to worry about the um, unlocking assault. If the enemy is also running like shock, right? Um, like this shock obsidian talent. A static shock, that's what it's called. Uh, you have to also worry about that and make sure you have tons of life, okay? So that's why I went with those mutant team speed with life. Team life, basically. So take a look at this. I Here I just went ahead and hit him with the alien traveler, although I didn't really have to. You know, he could have just continued attacking. It didn't really matter, but I still went ahead and continued attacking. And I wanted to get rid of him as soon as possible. And uh, it would have guaranteed me three coins. So I basically continued hitting him with that with all the skills and finally light catcher finished him off and that right there is how I, I got three coins out of that base as well um but yeah that's uh that's about it so out of all those bases the last one was the easiest to actually beat because i didn't have any positive side effects and stuff like that and i used one of the <laughs> most overrated um strategy in the game so the level 4 megaton strategy uh but it still ended up working out and uh you have to basically uh, look through the whole battle you have to think about the whole battle not just that level 4 megaton that you're going to give evasion to you have to worry about the life how you're going to basically counter soul drag as well and also the unlocking assault the aoe skills you have to have more than 185k but also there was static shock so i also watched out from that and given more life with basically team speed with team life uh so you have to watch out from things like that but it was the easiest to crack um but the war the war was super fun and uh, I actually enjoyed it. But this was part one. Soon part two will be coming out. Um, Team Series versus Hounds of Justice on my MG account. So I hope you guys are excited to see that. But let me know if you guys found this video helpful. If you learned anything new. And also if you enjoyed it in the comments down below. But thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace out.